At the time of its first deployment, the Galaxy-class Exploration Cruiser was the most powerful and technologically sophisticated starship ever constructed by the Federation. Able to maintain warp 9.6 for 12 hours and carrying a crew complement of over 1,000, the class was intended to fill the role of a multi-purpose long-range explorer with facilities for its large crew to live and work on board for several years in deep space. At a length of 642.51 meters, the iconic frame of the Galaxy class featured a massive saucer section containing extensive living quarters and amenities to support the cruiser's enormous crew and passenger complement. The subsystems and design structures of the Galaxy class were some of the most complex and sophisticated in Federation history, combining styles and features that had been gradually tested on other models, particularly the Ambassador class. These advanced and experimental systems afforded the Galaxy class powerful sensor suites, advanced scientific research facilities, cutting-edge drive systems and adaptable defences, but also demanded incredible processing power and numerous fail-safes to avoid technical problems. The Galaxy-class development program began in 2343, with the majority of design and construction efforts taking place at Utopia Planitia shipyards on Mars. The newly developed model of warp core intended for use by the Galaxy-class was designed independently at Outpost Seren T-1, under the supervision of famed warp field specialist Dr. Leah Brahms and her theoretical propulsion group. The advanced warp core of a Galaxy-class ship was able to generate approximately 12.75 billion gigawatts of power and the full structure of the core took up over 12 decks of vertical space within the vessel's engineering hull. For the first seven years of its service, the Galaxy class was the fastest vessel ever designed by the Federation, a title that was claimed by the Intrepid class long-range science ship in 2371. Though designed for the purpose of research and exploration, the Galaxy class was far from defenseless in combat. The vessel carried 14 Type 10 phaser arrays, two configurable torpedo launchers, each linked to a shared magazine of 250 photon warheads, and a complement of antimatter mines. Both of the ship's torpedo launchers were able to fire volleys of up to five warheads simultaneously, even programming individual projectiles to pursue different targets when faced with multiple attackers. The ship's deflector shields were also impressive, but the vessel's wide profile made evasive action somewhat difficult, putting more pressure on the shield system to resist incoming fire. This shortcoming sometimes caused the Galaxy class to struggle when faced with purpose-built warships, especially if outnumbered or caught in a drawn-out engagement. The main bridge of the Galaxy class presents a broad and well-spaced layout, placing the main tactical controls across a wide railing, circling behind the main command area. The bridge featured numerous modular stations that could be used to manage engineering or medical functions, should the situation demand it, and replicator facilities were readily available for use by bridge officers. The forward-starboard side of the bridge featured an emergency turbolift shaft, leading directly to the battle bridge. This feature was reserved for use in emergency saucer separations, or bridge evacuations. The Galaxy class is designed to carry a huge number of modular laboratories covering a wide variety of disciplines. These laboratories were directly fed passive sensor information from the ship's detection arrays, as well as any probes or relays the vessel deployed. A standard Galaxy class carries a large supply of probes, ranging from survey units to military reconnaissance models, and is able to deploy them quickly through the torpedo tubes. These units often carried communication sequences that allowed them to continue communicating with their mothership, even after it had left a solar system, particularly if other probes were left nearby to pass transmissions along. These features were invaluable in mapping new areas of space, allowing the Galaxy class itself to move on to a new system, while independent probes continued to gather data, drastically cutting down on time spent idling in a single location. For many decades, Federation policy had permitted the families of officers to live aboard starships on active service, but the Galaxy class was the first ship in the Federation's history to be specifically designed to accommodate a large and permanent civilian population. Non-Starfleet passengers aboard ship would sometimes hold support positions within the vessel's science or logistics divisions, but were generally restricted to quarters or emergency shelters when the ship entered a battle situation. As a result of this design policy, the Galaxy class was filled with a large number of of recreational, medical, and educational facilities, including entire schools, public access replimats, bars, lounges, and counseling departments. The advent of the Dominion War in 2373 saw the end of civilian residents aboard Federation starships, as the prospect of drastic civilian casualties became increasingly likely in the face of the Dominion threat. 
In the event of a catastrophic emergency, a Galaxy-class vessel is able to decouple its entire saucer section from the secondary hull, creating two independent, self-contained spacecraft. The saucer section was not capable of unassisted warp flight while separated, but was instead meant to serve as a huge lifeboat for the ship's civilian population and non-essential personnel, if the situation called for it. The ship's star drive section would be operated by the vessel's senior staff from the Battle Bridge on Deck 8, and was expected to continue engaging any hostile force Force until the saucer section could escape the engagement zone or make a forced landing onto a planetary surface. Should the saucer be separated while the vessel is under warp power, the star drive section is able to continue extending the ship's warp bubble around the saucer section for a short time, imparting enough momentum to carry the saucer through a short FTL hop to a safe area while distracting any pursuers. The Galaxy class features two small secondary shuttle bays positioned below a massive primary shuttle bay at the aft of the saucer section. Within these bays, the ship carries a vast contingent of shuttlecraft, passenger transports, work bees, short-range shuttle pods, and even a single Danube class runabout. These craft are used to expand the Galaxy's mission profile by performing detached reconnaissance assignments and carrying away teams. The Galaxy's main shuttle bay contained a total of five sealed hangars used to repair and refit existing auxiliary craft between missions. These hangars were built into the edges of the shuttle bay, and a number of adjustable tractor beam projectors were used to carefully convey shuttlecraft between them. The Galaxy class was one of the first vessels in Federation history to be equipped with a full-sized astrogation and stellar cartography suite. This facility was located on Deck 9 at the top of the Star Drive section, and allowed the ship's computers to model highly detailed maps of nearby star systems using passive sensors, as well as uplinking to Starfleet cartography via subspace to maintain constantly updated maps of known space, including current political boundaries, Federation starship positions, and starbase status updates. As a dedicated explorer ship, the Galaxy class was designed to serve as a mobile embassy for use in first contact scenarios and delicate negotiations. The vessel carried numerous luxury suites intended to house visiting ambassadors, and the senior officer's conference room could be quickly arranged to serve as a diplomatic lounge, allowing any visiting dignitaries to easily access navigational data and communication systems to remain in contact with their own government or starship throughout the proceedings. With the exception of the Battle Bridge and its surrounding area, almost every compartment within the Galaxy class was designed in a far more civilian and comfortable style than was traditional on Starfleet vessels. This was partially an accommodation for the ship's embarked families, but also a result of the vessel's long-haul mission profile, creating an environment where Starfleet officers can live and work in comfort and security over years-long exploratory assignments. The initial wave of Galaxy class vessels to be commissioned included the prototype USS Galaxy, the USS Yamato, and most crucially the USS Enterprise D, the newest flagship of the Federation. Commanded by Captain Jean-Luc Picard, the Enterprise went on to become one of the most historically significant starships in Federation history, making first contact with dozens of new races, charting huge regions of previously unexplored space, and even saving Earth itself from devastation at the hands of the Borg Collective. The Galaxy class has the dubious honour of being the first Starfleet vessel destroyed by the Dominion after the disastrous first contact with the Gamma Quadrant power resulted in the destruction of the USS Odyssey. The shortcomings of the Galaxy class when faced with advanced attack vessels were made clear in this engagement, as the vessel struggled to survive against three Jem'Hadar attack ships and was eventually destroyed by a Kamikaze attack. Following the formal outbreak of the Dominion War in 2373, many vessels of the Galaxy class were refitted to increase their survivability and effectiveness in heavy combat, being fitted with a third torpedo launcher and additional phaser arrays, as well as even more powerful shields. Some ships of the class, such as the USS Venture, were even fitted with nacelle-mounted secondary phaser strips, increasing the vessel's defensive coverage even further. Though most wartime Galaxy class vessels were refits, some were constructed to combat specifications during the war. These ships were assembled with expanded tactical systems, but without most of the internal utilities of a standard Galaxy class, departing the shipyards with almost 65% of their internal volume empty. In battle with the Dominion, Galaxy class vessels were used to lead battle groups known as Galaxy Wings, each built around a single Galaxy class ship and containing a number of support ships, tenders, escort vessels, and fighter squadrons. The large main shuttle bay of these wartime Galaxy class vessels were often located loaded with Peregrine class attack fighters for use in diversionary tactics or short-range combat sorties. 
The wartime Galaxy class played a crucial role in many of the most important engagements of the Dominion War, being heavily employed during Operation Return, as well as the first and second battles of Chintoka and the climactic Battle of Cardassia Prime. Even the aging prototype USS Galaxy saw extensive action during the war, having been refitted multiple times across its career. Though formally assigned the role of battleships, Galaxy class starships were most effective as command vessels, employing their advanced sensor and communication communication systems to coordinate with friendly forces. In direct ship-to-ship -ship combat, the Galaxy class was generally more successful against Cardassian vessels than mainline Dominion ships, as the shield bleed-through effects of Dominion Polaron beams lent greater survivability to smaller and more nimble warships. Following the Treaty of Bajor and the conclusion of the Dominion War, the Galaxy class was reassigned to exploratory and humanitarian assignments. The initial design of the Galaxy class had projected a potential 100-year service life, and in spite of new designs like the Intrepid and Sovereign class vessels taking center stage, construction of new Galaxy class starships showed no signs of slowing across the late 24th century. There is perhaps no greater example of the Federation philosophy made manifest than the design and mission of the Galaxy-class Explorer. Though conflicts like the Dominion War have briefly warped the vessel's purpose, the Galaxy-class has always remained a ship of peace, purpose-built to carry courageous explorers and diplomats across vast distances over many years, and to continue the expansion of humanity's knowledge and understanding by continuing to boldly go where no one has gone before. Thank you for watching. Please remember to follow the link below to check out our announcement for our upcoming original sci-fi drama, The Sojourn.